Welcome to Road Ready Episode 4. I wanted to do a lighter subject for this episode, and air cleaners came to mind. And then I gave it some thought. Air cleaners aren't that light a subject. When to change an air cleaner, and what is routine service for air cleaners, is not a simple subject, especially for four-wheel drive vehicles that go off pavement. So let's talk about that. You'll often hear me make references to the Factory Workshop Manual. The acronym these days is FSM. The Factory Service Manual for our 1999 Jeep XJ Cherokee is covered in this 1998 book, almost to a T. And this happens to be the service manual that I keep on my shelf. The Mopar Jeep Manual refers to a Schedule A and a Schedule B. The Schedule A being the lighter duty use of the vehicle. And these are 7,500 mile intervals for most routine service. Schedule B is severe duty, and there the schedule for routine service is every 3,000 miles. That said, there are variations on that, and the air filter is one of those variations. According to the FSM, the air filter service or replacement should be every 30,000 miles for light duty use and every 15,000 miles for severe duty use. Are these valid figures? Let's discuss that. I grew up in rural Nevada and had the good fortune of working in service stations where routine air filter service was part of our daily chores. In our environment, which included ranchers and off-pavement users of vehicles, we knew when air filters needed service. The basic routine for us was, where has the vehicle been and is it due for an inspection or replacement of the air filter? I'll qualify that. Nevada has alkaline soil on rural roads, and washboard turns up dust that invariably will clog an air filter in very few miles. So, where a normal air filter replacement might be 30,000 or 15,000 miles, driving in backcountry and on washboard roads in particular, in places like the western states, an air filter can clog up in, I've seen it happen, as few as a dozen miles. Those years of service station work and my early career as a fleet truck mechanic showed me the difference between oil bath air filtration and paper element air filtration. Oil bath filters, ironically, are far more tolerant of dust conditions than dry paper elements. In an oil bath air filter, the dirt will settle to the bottom of the filter into the oil base and actually accumulate there until it reaches the stage that the filter no longer flows air properly. In the case of dry paper pleated elements, the pleats fill up with dust and debris quickly in backcountry environments, and this certainly pertains to four-wheeling as we understand it. Trails like the Rubicon or the Colorado 14ers or at Moab are absolutely filled with dust. The air is so thick with dust you could cut it with a knife and that ends up in an air filter in a matter of minutes. In the earlier days of pleated paper air filters, it was common practice to take the air filter out of the canister and reverse blow air through the filter to remove dirt and debris. That soon became an unacceptable practice and procedure changed to just replace the filter. This wasn't as cost effective, obviously, as blowing the dirt out of the pleated filters, but it was far more effective and assured that proper airflow was taking place. In the carbureted engine era, filters plugging up to any degree at all enriched the fuel mixture and caused tremendous fuel consumption. It was like running with a choke on. In fact, filters like that caused a great deal of carbon buildup in engines. In our modern era, of electronically fuel and spark managed engines, the system can actually compensate for an over rich mixture caused by a clogging air filter. But in the process, by leaning the mix out, the performance of the engine falls off, the fuel efficiency of the engine falls off, there's a loss of power. So is it cost effective to replace the air filter? Of course it is. It's also practical from the angle of engine longevity to make sure that filters are changed whenever needed. My rule of thumb for air filter changes is, of course, follow the factory recommendation of 15,000 miles or 30,000 miles. But more importantly, where has the vehicle been? One trip over the Rubicon Trail is enough to damage the air filter to the extent that it needs replacing. It's clogged from all of that dust. So consider your driving environment and inspect your filters regularly. 
You may see a minor loss of performance when the filter is actually clogging and never see telltale signs of a fully clogged filter until it's too late. Routine filter changes make perfect sense. Last summer, we had an unusual example of air quality shifting due to fire smoke. Our Jeep Cherokee, driven primarily on the highway that entire season, had an air filter plugged up with fire smoke, which was just as clogging as dust. Ultimately, the air filter needed changing way before the factory recommended 15,000 mile severe service or 30,000 mile basic service. When I removed the air filter, I could actually find segments of the pleats that showed fire smoke or light gray debris that had built up on the filter. So consider your driving environment, consider the environment as a whole when it's time to replace your air filter. I also have a formula for changing oil. And this goes back to when I first started using Mobile One synthetic oil in the late 1980s. And regardless of whether I'm using conventional oil or a synthetic oil, I follow that formula to this day. I go by oil coloration in addition to the routine mileage intervals called for in the FSM, especially with carbureted engines. Engines operated under load cause the oil to get contaminated. What I learned in the days of using Mobile One is that the coloration of the oil depended upon how much air-fuel ratio change the engine had undergone in a given period of time. For that type of synthetic oil, I considered anything from honey to a darker mocha brown to be acceptable before an oil change. Anything beyond that, or certainly leaning toward grayish color of the oil, was time for a change. I would, however, change the oil filter more frequently, usually every three to 5,000 miles maximum, to assure proper oil filtration, which is an entirely different story. Today, our modern EFI engines with electronic fuel and spark management regulate air fuel ratios very accurately. And as a result, you don't get fuel washing of cylinders or contaminants that come from an overrich mix or anything like that going on. For our modern engines, I will use the severe service guideline for an engine that's subjected to work. In the case of light duty, the light duty or A service in the FSM is acceptable. Overall, I'm looking to maintain the oil's coloration and change the oil filters on time. In a quote from Blackstone Laboratories, experts on oil analysis, oil seldom breaks down. What happens is the oil becomes contaminated. I recently added a bypass oil filtration system. It happens to be the France oil filtration system available now from LSI, Lubrication Specialties Inc. And that bypass oil filtration system extends the intervals between oil filter changes and also extends the life of the engine oil because it removes contaminants way down to under two microns. You cannot do that with a factory full flow oil filter, but you can do it in a bypass mode. So to sum it up, what are my guidelines for air filter and oil filter and oil changes? Air filters, again, are governed by driving environment and exposure to contaminants. By the same token, contaminants in engine oil are the reason why we change motor oil. So oil and filter changes are governed by the condition of the oil. Filtration is a whole other story, and I do double down on oil filter changes. As I shared, bypass filtration is added insurance.